Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem one from the Code Chef Maylong challenge entitled Minimum Deletions. The problem states, the greatest common divisor of a sequence is the greatest positive integer which divides each element of this sequence. You are given a sequence A of positive integers with size n. You are allowed to delete up to n minus one elements of this sequence, i.e. you may delete any number of elements including zero as long as the resulting sequence is non-empty. And the question asks to please find the minimum number of elements which have to be deleted so that the GCD of the resulting sequence would be equal to one or determine that it is impossible to do so and output negative one. And note that the constraints for this problem are t, the number of test cases that will be given is gonna be between one and 100, n, the length of each sequence or array that we're given is gonna be between two and 1,000, and the value of each element in our sequence A is going to be between one and 50,000. So note that this problem is uh, could be confused with the largest co-prime subset problem, which this problem is not. So if you don't know what the term co-prime means, it just means that given two integers, they are co-prime if the largest factor that they share or the GCD is equal to one. So for instance, if you have the numbers 12 and 35, although these are somewhat composite numbers, 12 has the factors 1, 2, 3, 6, and 12 or 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12, and 35 has the factors 1, 5, 7, and 35, uh, these two numbers don't share any factors. Uh, so other than other than one. So you would say that 12 and 35 are co-prime. So the largest co-prime subset problem is asking you to find, uh, given an array, the largest subset in which each pair of elements in that subset are co-prime. That is not this problem. This problem is asking for the largest subset with GCD equal to one, that being the GCD of the subset or of the sequence. Um, and we can reduce this problem to ask, do any two elements of our sequence have a GCD of one? And we'll see why that's the case in a second, but just note that this problem is not the largest co-prime subset problem. It's the largest subset with GCD equal to one problem. So let's take a look at the examples that Code Chef provided us with. So here are our examples. Our first number here is t, the number of test cases, and then we're provided with uh, an n, which represents the length of our array. So we're given our first array here with two elements, and then uh, we're given another uh, array of length two with the elements two and four. So you can hear, you can see here that the answer for our first array, uh, two and three, should be zero, meaning that we have to remove zero elements to end up with a GCD of one uh, of our sequence. And for the second array, two and four, there are no number of elements uh, between 1 and n to minus 1, which is only going to be uh, being able to remove one element that will give us a GCD of 1. So note that earlier I said that this problem can be reduced to do any two elements have GCD equal to 1 of your given array. So note that if you are given two elements that have a GCD of one, i.e. our first array, two and three are co-prime numbers, they don't share a uh, common factor other than one, you can add any number of elements to this array of length two and make it array of length n plus whatever number of elements that you're adding, and the GCD of your overall array is still going to be one. So removing elements from an array is never going to get you from a GCD that isn't one to a GCD that is one. If you have an array and you have two elements in that array that are uh, co-prime, you already have a subset or a sequence that is your full array that has a GCD equal to one. Um, and the way that you calculate uh, whether or not that your array has a GCD of one is just by, you, you could do it the brute force way of just checking that every single pair of numbers, uh, is it co-prime or not by using the GCD function, or uh, there is a much faster way to do this. And in doing every single pair, that'll give you a quadratic algorithm which would time out. But it's a well-known fact uh, that to find the GCD of an array, you just need to take the GCD of two numbers at a time and then do that for 
uh, the remaining elements. So if you take the first two elements, find the GCD, uh, then save that element as the GCD so far, and then take that number, the GCD of that number, uh, plus the next number, and you continue to do that. You can do this in linear time, and you'll end up with uh, your GCD of your sequence. And at that point, or at any point, if you end up with a GCD of one, you know for the remainder of the array, your GCD is always going to be one, and then you can just return zero. Um, so if you have uh, a GCD of one between two elements uh, in your array, you are just going to output zero. And if you don't, removing any number of elements isn't going to get you to a GCD of one. So at that point, you know it's impossible. So our only two possible answers are going to be zero and negative one. And you'll return zero if you can find that the GCD of your given array is one and we can show a quick example here so imagine that you have an array of length four and you have uh, four elements here so the way you would find the GCD of this sequence is you take the GCD of the first two numbers 24 and 36 and you'd find that that was 12 then you take the GCD of this number 12 and your next element 15 and find that this was three and then you take the GCD of your result here three and your final number 16 and you would find that this is one and note that you can do this in any order of your numbers it doesn't matter uh, you can just take two at a time we're just doing it in order here and uh, this is how you find the GCD of a sequence so there's a way that you can think through why this works imagine that uh, you know 15 and 16 are the two numbers that are co-prime in our sequence and if we were to extend this sequence remove the 24 and 36 and then just add a bunch of 30s because 15 and 30 uh, share the factor that is 15 all of the 30s wouldn't make a difference up until the point so taking the GCD of 30 and 30 would still be 30 30 and 30 would still be 30 and then when you got to 30 and 15 it would still be 15 uh, and so then you'd end up at some point at taking the GCD of 15 and 16 so no numbers will ever increase the GCD to above what the uh, value currently is it will only decrease it as in the case that the 12 and the 15 decrease the GCD to 3 um, so this is the way you can sort of think about it if you'd like to see the mathematical proof uh, it is right here but I'm not going to spend any time going through this because I don't think most of the viewers care uh, just know that if you have a sequence of numbers taking the GCD of two elements of that array at a time uh, and then going through the array and, and doing that in linear time will give you the GCD of the sequence and you can work through this proof if you'd like to see why that is the case so having that said let's take a look at the code so here we have a pretty short amount of code, less than 10 lines, and we have our GCD function at the top. This is pretty common if you've ever had a problem that has had GCD before. We've covered this in previous videos, and we're just going to use this in our function minimum deletion. So this takes a vector of integers by const ref, and this is going to be uh, containing all of the values or elements in our array given by the problem and we are going to initialize a value GCD so far equal to the first element and then we are going to loop through the second element to the end of the array and for each of these elements we are going to compute our GCD so far to be equal to the GCD of the GCD so far plus the new element and if at any point this GCD so far is equal to one we know that we found at least two elements in our array that have a GCD of one and therefore the GCD of of our array overall has a GCD of one and we can return zero meaning that the minimum number of elements we need to delete is zero otherwise if we never hit this condition we know that it won't be possible and we just return negative one and the time complexity of this problem is going to be linear. Technically, this linear should be t times n, which is t, the number of uh, test cases, multiplied by n, the number of possible elements in our array. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contest start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.